G'day and welcome back. While I'm idly working on the Bethel's Panther, the previous video's content, I want to continue assembling in between due to it being my favourite part of modelling. When I posted an image to some friends asking to pick a Zoids kit to do next with 6 available, the DCSJ and the Zero Schneider tied. Given that I just did an Empire Zero, I figured a Shield Liger would be pretty good, especially since I have none assembled anymore, thanks to the spicy flu causing me to lose work and having to sell off most of my models. Previously I owned the Mark II Shield Liger, which this kit is a direct copy of, just in a different livery, a standard version, Desert Livery, Ramar Gold, and a bootleg BT with the same Mark II cannons. This many years along, it's interesting to see little modifications to the sprues or clear signs of repair work to the tooling and the wearing resulting in flash on the sprues, though these don't affect the kit. Overall, it took about 5 hours for me to put together, with a few breaks in between, and as you will notice, I started out trying to watch Chaotic Sentry while chugging along. I have to say, it hasn't aged well at all. The strange dialogue, animations, and overall story is pretty dungy, and I ended up tapping out after a while to listen to music instead. Back to the kit, I do have to note that, obviously this being a modern representation of the classical mechanical kit from Tommy in the 80s, it just screams 80s. The silver and black basic scheme with an orange visor just reminds me of the robot toys and things that I've seen from that era, and I have to say, it is pretty damn cool. Building the sections of this kit, I will advise you 100% to use glue, which I used Revel's Contact to Professional, but just be sure not to glue the parts that move for posing, just the sections that clamp together, because a lot of them won't stay together all that well. Having done a few of these shield lager kits, I also found myself clipping out chunks of parts at a time and doing whole areas in one go to save time or be efficient. But if you're new, just take your time and do smaller bits of each step at a time. Also, don't be afraid to tick off or highlight the bits that you've done as you go along, in case you decide to take a break for the day or come back later. A lot of folks I know will get stuck into a larger kit like this and get discouraged from going back when they realise they don't recall what they are up to. As with all of the Shield and Blade Liger kits, or even the Saber Tigers, the paws suck. There's a ton of parts and they make for a decent amount of time just to get through them, but it's worth it in the end because they do have a pretty high function. One thing to note is I also don't recall the uh, power belts. Yeah, let's go with power belts. I don't remember them being this soft. They almost feel like jelly and are super floppy. On the topic of the soft pieces, the little grommets that sit in between the sections for the ability to move yet not be loose are prone to getting jags and being ruined if you don't give them a light flash trim before putting them in, which I advise you do. Price-wise, I paid $106 for my kit delivered, but that was damn decent, as these usually sell for about $140 here, so I'd say keep an eye out for deals, especially on Frontline Hobbies, which is an awesome hobby shop to deal with. And just last week they had a sale where this exact DCSJ was on sale for about $110. If there would be one negative thing that I have to say about the Shield and Blade Laggers that Koto put out, it's that I don't like that the tails aren't poseable. They're static, and putting them on shelves or in cabinets can often be a pain in the neck, as they don't bend. This often leads to me taking the tails off when I'm storing them, so that I can get them into a cool pose or even fit them on shelves. However, credit where credit is due, these were among the first kits that Kodo put out, having the maneuverable tails such as the Zeros coming later on. A little further advice is that, obviously versus the size of the Zero Empire that I did last time, this is quite a big kit. So if you're new to modelling, I highly recommend that you don't try to do it in one sitting. If you can, try to break up the kit into sections, which you will see in the manual, and actually already has them written down, such as head, torso sections, legs, cannons, and all the other miscellaneous parts. Also, don't forget your posture and hydration while doing these kits. Personally, I kinda get wrapped up and lose track of time, such as last night, when it came to the point where I mucked up a few of the pieces that I realised I need to stop and have something to eat. I've been going at it for about 4 hours. And although this kit does come with a bunch of spares, which you will notice if you do this kit, here we are, the final piece. Now, I bet you thought this is the part of the video where it ends. Not quite. I'd like to point out that with shield and blade laggers, there's a lot of risen areas on the whole model that are effectively giant bolts or rivets, and if you have spare time, you can go along with even just a single paint and dot them up to give it just a little bit more of a spark here and there. 
Most of the time people will ink inside the lines of these kits, and that can take a fair while, but does look brilliant afterwards. However, this one little trick may save you time and money, just to get a bit more aesthetic out of the model. The paint I'm using here is by Custom Color, which was done for modelers by the auto paint brand House of Color, and have absolutely beautiful metallics. The only issue is getting hold of these paints can be pretty tricky, as they're no longer made. So I will suggest some of the easier brands to find, such as either Humbrel or Tamiya. And both of these brands are readily available at hobby stores, and typically won't break the bank. And here it is, in all of its 80s glory. It turned out pretty cool, but at the end of the day I will admit that the Mark II just ended up looking a little better, having more gold pieces here and there. Which I suppose, at the end of the day, it's just colour. So if I manage to pick up another one of these kits, then I can probably paint it to look just like the Mark II. Before we close out, I do want to draw your attention to the absolute epic box art here. And the fact that the Lager Zero and Berserk Fury are in the background is perhaps prototypes. And now it's time for the obligatory pose with figures, though I do believe I am running out of room. Feel free to suggest the next Zoid I do, and if I have it, I'll try to make it happen. Thanks for watching. Cheers!